This patient had symptoms of bacterial pneumonia, shortness of breath, cough, also a fever. When she didn't respond to medication, she ended up at the office of our good friend, pulmonary and critical care physician, Dr. Raj Dasgupta. He ordered a CT scan and followed up with a bronchoscopy and uncovered some interesting findings. You are looking at the CT scan images of the chest of a 65-year-old female. She came in with a chief complaint of fevers, shortness of breath, and cough. She was diagnosed with pneumonia, but unfortunately, she wasn't getting better. So we had to get a sample from her lungs to see what's causing all the damage. And you know what we discovered? Worms. I diagnosed her with a parasite called Strongyloides, also known as the threadworm, part of the round worm family. In healthy individuals, you could have no symptoms, maybe a rash, maybe some diarrhea, but if your immune system is compromised, you could have cough, shortness of breath, and fever. And in this case, the worms are spreading throughout the body, affecting every organ, causing a life-threatening illness. So if you have a rash, diarrhea, and pneumonia-like symptoms that are not responding to traditional therapy, you might have strongyloides. It is important to make the diagnosis early because we have medications to make you feel better. I've always been at once intrigued by parasites and also scared to death because they can literally penetrate through your skin. You don't necessarily see them. And then they migrate through your body and then manifest themselves in the strangest of places. Well, typically they enter through the skin, right? Exactly. So when you walk barefoot through soil or sewage, unfortunately, in a moist, warm environment, that's usually the home to these types of strongyloides and roundworms in general. And then what they do is they migrate up through your skin. And like Dr. Raj said, they can actually go anywhere. But more commonly, what happens is they lodge in your small intestine. And then they hang out there. And then when you go to excrete them, they work their way back up from your anus to other parts like the lungs. So it's, it's a pretty creepy life cycle with these parasites when you think about it. In med school and then in emergency medicine, you're always taught to look out for people who have eaten uncooked meat and they start to have symptoms maybe in their brain. They're not thinking clearly. They're, not, they're, they're just not themselves. And these parasites can work their way up into your brain, neurocystic And I, I think it's one of those where you have to have a high index of suspicion. Also, anyone out there who has a compromised immune system, that's where you're more at risk for these types of infections. And the thing is, you may not even know you're immunocompromised, but this could be one of the defining infections that make people realize or make your doctors realize that you are immunocompromised. So just be aware. And when things don't go according to plan, as this, in this case, if you think you have a bacterial infection, you're treated with antibiotics, things aren't getting better, and your healthcare provider gives you another set of antibiotics, and you're still not getting better, you're getting worse, that's when you see someone like Dr. Raj, a specialist who will then go to the next level and figure out, well, you know what, this could be something completely different than we would be expecting here. And just because we don't see this a lot doesn't mean it couldn't happen to you. Well, of course. And don't walk, so don't walk around in sewage, okay? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> or just be mindful in terms of soil walking barefoot, especially in tropical environments. And the environments. good news is once you made the diagnosis, this is treatable. Exactly.